I hear from so many viewers how they're afraid to work with all-in-one liquid coolers. They're afraid it's gonna leak and it's simply too complicated. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. We're gonna go through everything that you need to know to consider an AIO liquid cooler. Then we're going to use our current video editing PC, a Ryzen 9 5900X, and swap out its huge air cooler for one of these Aorus Water Force coolers with RGB and an LCD pop head screen to prove that not only is there nothing to fear from liquid AIO coolers, they can make your PC look amazing. Thank you to Gigabyte for sending over these Aorus Water Force coolers. If you get value of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release new content. With that, let's jump into it. So what is an all-in-one liquid cooler and why should you consider it versus air coolers? And of course, what are the practical considerations that you need to think about for your next upgrade or build? Now, there are essentially three main ways to cool your PC. Number one, you can use an air cooler. Number two, you can build a custom liquid cooling system. Or number three, you can use an all-in-one AIO liquid cooler, often called a water cooler. AIO coolers pump a fluid to transfer the heat from the CPU to a metal radiator where the heat is then dissipated using fans. The AIO has a couple of key components. First, it has a cold plate where heat is directly transferred from the CPU itself. Most AIOs then use an impeller style pump located in the pump head to move the fluid to the radiator, although there are a handful of coolers that place the pump in the radiator or even the tubing. Now, AIOs are referred to by their total fan size and they generally come in one, two, and three fan variants. In terms of aesthetic options, most AIOs come either black or white options. And while non-RGB AIOs are available, many have some RGB elements on the fans and or the pump head. Some AIOs have cool features on the pump head like this Aorus Water Force 240X, which has an LCD screen that you can use to display system information like temperatures, cool looking images, or even animated graphics. In fact, when it comes to aesthetics, AIOs offer a huge range of customization and personalization options for your PC build. Let's talk briefly about liquid AIOs versus air coolers because both have advantages and disadvantages. Now at the budget level for lower heat loads, air coolers offer an incredibly cheap solution that will fit virtually any budget. But by contrast, most smaller 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter AIOs tend to have weaker performance than their air cooler counterparts and cost quite a bit more for what they are. Now, personally, I'd only recommend them for small form factor builds that can't fit anything else. At the mid range of 240 millimeter AIOs is where there's a lot more gray area between liquid coolers and air coolers. While AIO liquid coolers remain the more expensive option, not only do they cool the CPU, but one thing that's often overlooked is that for the same price, they also provide additional case airflow at the radiator though it is a little bit less because of the impedance of pushing or pulling air through the radiator itself. At this level of cooling, many air coolers begin to get bulky and can often cover up RAM slots, which often requires checking memory, stick height, and limits aesthetic options. On some other boards, very large air coolers can even bump into the GPUs in the top PCIe slot. For noise, liquid AIO coolers can smooth out the fan noise as the liquid in the system acts as a kind of heat battery that can soak up heat without having to immediately spin up the fans to high speeds, especially if the heat loads are shorter duration like in a gaming session. Air coolers provide similar thermal performance, but typically at the cost of slightly higher and possibly more frequent noise. At the very high end of heat loads, including long duration workloads, the best air and best liquid coolers are very close in performance, but the best liquid AIOs do beat out the best air coolers. In terms of lifespan, AIO coolers should last about six to eight years, while air coolers will last as long as these little fans do. I would of course recommend repasting your CPU cooler every three to five years, depending on the rating of your thermal pace. Now, while AIO pumps can fail before this time, and some can even leak, this actually doesn't happen very often at all. And AIO reliability in general has become much improved over the past five years. More likely is that the liquid coolant in the AIO will permeate over time. You can think of this almost like microscopic evaporation. We're talking about a very, very tiny amount at a time, not something that's possible to really notice unless you cut the AIO open and measure the liquid, say eight years from now. At some point in the future, again, about six to eight years, enough coolant will have permeated that performance will begin to degrade. Note that some AIOs can be refilled at this point. 
So their limiting factor is going to be the lifespan of the pump. So let's just briefly talk about what size cooler you want to buy. It's all going to be based on the heat load and the size of the case you're buying, whether or not the case will accommodate that loop. Now, of course, you can get a different case. That's fine. If you're buying a six or eight core CPU, this is just general guidance here. I would think about getting a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, possibly a 280 if you're running, you know, really heavy, uh, long duration workloads on it and you're heavily overclocking it. For larger CPUs, the Ryzen 5900X, you could certainly use a 240. You could also consider a 280 or a 360. And as you go up to something like an i9-12900K, I would certainly consider either a 360 millimeter or a 420 because those things put out a lot of heat, especially if you're gonna overclock it. So again, it's dependent on your heat load and it's also dependent on fitting inside your PC case. Let's go over the proper placement for all-in-one liquid coolers. Now, there's a couple of key rules to follow here. The first one is that when you're done installing the system, the pump should not be the highest point in the loop. Now, air is gonna to tend to pool at the highest point and if that high point is at the pump, then you could end up with an air pocket in the pump, which makes it very difficult to actually pump water, often indicated by a gurgling sound. Now, this is pretty easy to avoid. There are basically two ways to install the AIO to avoid getting air in the pump head. The most optimal is to install the radiator in the case roof, with the tubes either facing towards the back of the case or the tubes facing the front of the case. Alternatively, you can install the radiator in the front of the case and here we would prefer a tubes down installation, but if that won't work, then installing tubes up is also fine, especially given how long GPUs are these days. Note that some cases have a side panel option. Just treat this the same as the front panel installation. And always avoid a bottom mounted radiator. And typically you're only gonna find this in very small form factor cases. Case airflow is something that you wanna consider. The most standard setups for a top or side mounted AIO is for them to be in a push setup. That means the fans are pushing air through the radiator and you're gonna have separate intake fans at the front pulling in air through the front panel to balance out the overall air pressure in the case. For front mounting AIOs, turning the fans around and pulling air through the radiator and front panel is a typical setup with fans on the top and rear then pushing air out of the case to balance out the air pressure. Of course, you can do the opposite in either situation, though it isn't very common. Whatever direction of airflow that you choose, I would recommend shooting for a roughly even balance of intake and exhaust, or even a slightly positive pressure setup where there's slightly more intake airflow than exhaust, as that should help with dust buildup. You don't need mesh screens or dust filters on exhaust openings, only on the intake ones. So feel free to remove the dust filters at the top of your case if you mount your radiator there, as this will improve the airflow. We only care about keeping dust from getting into the PC, not if dust is blown out of the PC into the room. Now let's talk pump speed for a moment. Keeping the pump at a steady rate is your best bet here. And we want it as close to 100% as possible, allowing for any noise. Most of the AIOs that I've recently used are completely inaudible in a PC case, even at 100% pump speed. So I'd recommend starting there with the case air fans going and see if you can even hear it. If you can, try turning it down 5% at a time until either you can't hear it or end up at 80%. Of course, when first installed, many loops will take about 15 minutes of running at 100% to purge out any air bubbles in the pump head that accumulated from the shipping process. That might cause a little bit of noise. So I'd let the loop run at 100% speed for at least 15 minutes before doing any pump speed adjustments for noise reasons. Do note that a lot of third-party fan control software in particular, the ASUS Fan Expert may come with a quiet preset that sets the AIO pump speed lower than this. So I'd recommend either changing this preset if possible, or where not possible, yeah, I'm looking at you, ASUS Fan Expert 4, just avoid that particular preset. When setting your fan curve for the radiator fans, you'll do it just like you do with an air cooler. You're either gonna use the CPU temp, or if your AIO has a separate liquid temperature sensor, you can use that instead. Personally, I just use the CPU temp. Now setting up RGB, LCD screens, and other add-ons should be done following the manufacturer's instructions included with your unit. My only advice here is to think ahead with these features in terms of cable management for the build. Now, these particular AIOs, because they have RGB and the LCD screen and all kinds of stuff, they have actually a ton of cables. Not all AIOs have this many cables. But you wanna think about 
cable managing it, especially when you're putting the fans on the AIO itself. So if you wanted to do a tubes up installation or an installation where the tubes were towards the back top, then you would want to orient it this way. This is the 280 millimeter one. So we're going to orient the fans where the cable's coming out here. And we're, I just use a, a Velcro twist. You can use a tie. You can make this as tight as you want. I don't really think it's that important to make it super tight. Alternatively, looking over here at the 240 millimeter one, this would be appropriate for tubes down in the front or tubes at the top front of the case. So we would want to orient it this way instead. Here we go. Let's roll the music and replace this monstrous air cooler with a sweet looking Gigabyte Aorus Water Force AIO. While switching out an air cooler to a new AIO is more complex than just installing an AIO in a new build, this was definitely worth the effort. While the Fractal Messify C case is a bit tight in its clearances, it looks great once finished. The build looks really clean and it's amazing how much more alive and spacious it feels. From a performance perspective, the build is running about 10 degrees cooler at load with our very limited testing. For noise, the Side Ninja 5 air cooler we had is already very quiet, so there really isn't any audible difference, but the Aorus Water Force AIO pump is dead silent, even at 100% pump speed. So let's make you some product recommendations. Remember, there's a ton of AIO coolers out there. There's a ton of good ones. But let me just give you a couple if you're looking for something just to get started. Uh, at the budget level, I would recommend looking at some of the coolers that id Cooling have. They're very nice. They perform pretty well. Uh, they're not the top of the charts, but they're very good coolers and they look great. Uh, these are like the Zoom Flow, the Aura Flow. The only real differences here honestly are what the pump looks like and what kind of RGB or uh, ARGB elements it has. I will say though, this Ice Flow 240, just be aware that the pump for this one is actually in the radiator itself, something to think about when you're positioning the AIO. Similarly, Cooler Master has some really good units uh, that are at the budget level. There's the Cooler Master Master Liquid uh, ML240. This is RGB. It's This is the version two. It's a greatly improved over the uh, first version. The other one I like is the one that Cooler Master actually sent us over for our 5600 build, which was the 240 Illusion. We actually went ahead and got it in the white. Not bad, $120 over at Amazon. I have to tell you, the fans on this look amazing. The pump head effects re look really amazing too. And it performs really, really well keeping, you know, it's a 5600X, so it doesn't need a lot of cooling, but it performs pretty well so far in all of our testing. Of course, the coolers that we were looking at today are the Aorus Water Force coolers. The one I would recommend if you're going to go out and get one of these is I would get the X version. That's not the one we had today. We had the mirror version with uh, LED on the pump screen, but they actually make one with an LED. CD screen, you can do anything you want with this. You can play cartoons on it. You can have it display the temperature. $230 is not a bad price uh, for this, uh, for an LCD screen on it for the 240, 280s, 250. That actually probably sounds more reasonable to me. Of course, we all know Aorus is not the only one to make these. Uh, NZXT is probably the one that most people think of when they think of LCD on the pump head itself. So there's the Kraken Z53 RGB series. Now they're quite a bit, they're a little bit more money, of course. They're about $20, $30 more than the AORS coolers, but certainly, certainly very, very good coolers. I'm not the biggest fan of how they do the RGB on their fans and the ring lights, but I know some people really like it. And of course you can't leave off the Corsair eight series of coolers. These are phenomenal coolers. I think people particularly like the white versions of these. Um, we're looking right here at the IQ H100i Elite. I'll leave links for a number of good ones down in the video description. Not only do they look great, but these are very good performers, similarly to the NZXT and the Aorus Water Force cooler. Now let's just talk 
pure performance. So the Arctic liquid coolers and EKAIO liquid coolers honestly can't be beat uh, in testing done by uh, folks like Gamers Nexus. These are the ones that slug it out for the top of the chart. So here's the 240. Arctic now actually does make this in an ARGB version uh, as well as just a straight RGB version for about you know 90 uh, to $100. Of course, the 280 is the one that most uh, folks seen tested uh, as I was talking about. And they now make this in an ARGB and RGB version as well. And even massive monster 420 millimeter all in a liquid cooler for not a bad price, $125 for the all black, no RGB version. Now remember with the other versions, the other RGB versions, there's no RGB on the pump itself. I think that's the, maybe the one thing Arctic is lacking here, but they're certainly not lacking in terms of performance. And then as I said, we've got EK, uh, EK AIOs are slugging it out with Arctic at pretty much every stop on the, uh, on the performance charts. We've got the black, we've got uh, RGB for $107. We've got the black ones they introduced to be more competitive with Arctic's all black uh, non-RGB coolers. And they come in the various sizes as well. Again, links to all this down in the video description. Thank you for joining us on this AIO water cooling guide. What did you think? Are there things that you do differently when you install an AIO? If so, let me know down in the comments. And of course, remember, give the video a like. It really does help out the channel. This guy really appreciates it. And subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. And if you're interested in the best coolers for Ryzen 5000, I'm gonna leave a big box right here. You can check this out and see what I think are the best coolers for Ryzen 5000. And we'll catch you on the next one.